Hello judges, today we'll be sharing about our team, strategies and learning experiences from this competition. Firstly, let us introduce ourselves. We are Team Wendela from Singapore, comprising of Kang Wendelin and myself, Angela Pielago. In 2018, we both participated in the National Robotics Competition, NRC. In 2019, we participated in NRC Open and RoboCup, where Wendelin achieved second place in RoboCup on stage, while I participated in Postage Rescue. This year, we participated in the International Cold Space Online or ICO Challenge in the Cold Space Rescue for the SEPQ19 category. Wendelin achieved third in best presentation, first in most educational value, and first in community awareness. Before we begin on our strategies, here is a summary of the preliminary challenge. The category we took part in is Cold Space Rescue for SEPQ19. In the challenge test involves us earning the most number of points by collecting and depositing objects in the given five minutes. In the process of doing so, we must avoid traps and other obstacles that can hinder the points earned. With that, we investigated how to maximize the points earned using the most efficient strategy. We tried to make use of all of the archetypes of software features, and a lot of trial and error was involved in this process. Every time we implemented a new strategy, we had to decide whether to use it or not, depending on whether it was increasing our points or not. Through refining our strategy, we managed to improve our score that originally fluctuated between 1,500 and 1,800 until we could consistently score above 2,000. There are many possibilities to what strategies we can use, but it is crucial that we pick the ones that are consistent. The strategy should increase scores for almost every single run, otherwise it is not effective and either a new strategy replaces it or revert to an old consistent strategy. Now we will further analyse the strategy to use. To maximize the points earned, our robot had to complete mini tasks such as avoiding traps, walls, and the obstacles that hindered the collecting and depositing process, and only traveling to necessary squares for collection or deposition of objects. Through efficient movement, trap, and obstacle avoidance, and the efficient picking up and depositing of objects, our overall mission will be solved. Now moving on to our AI algorithm and resource two. The tools and resources we use include Replit to test, edit, and back up our code, Sublime as our main code editor, and online communication platforms such as WhatsApp, Zoom, and Google Meet for discussions. The advantages of using these platforms is that we were able to work on the same code individually or simultaneously, and it also allowed us to understand each other's strategies and ideas. We have broken our AI algorithm into five parts, namely movement function, color sorting function, square targeting rotation, wall rotation or avoidance, and trap avoidance. These will be further explained in the next few slides. First, our movement function. Our movement function takes in speed and rotation variables. Speed ranges from minus one to one, where one is the robot moving at maximum speed forward, and minus one is the robot moving at maximum speed in reverse. Rotation also ranges from minus one to one, where one is the robot moving at maximum clockwise direction, and minus one is the robot moving at maximum anti-clockwise direction. A robot will move at a maximum speed of 100 when it is not carrying any objects, since avoiding traps is not necessary. When it picks up an object, its speed decreases to 80, so that it can still move at a high speed while avoiding traps. At squares where there are no traps, our robot will run at maximum speed. In essence, our movement function calculates the specific speed and rotation for the wheels of the robot to move. Next, our color sorting function. First, we see all the different possible colors on the map. Different actions need to be taken by the robot for each color. Our check curl function acts as a color sorter. We analyze the RGB values of each color to determine the best way to separate the different cases. Using if-else statements, the function checks the current color sensor values, determines what color is detected, and returns an integer for that specific case. Using the return integers, we then code the actions of the robot. Next, we have square targeting rotation, or SDR for short, which is the main concept behind most of our strategies. The map is divided into a 3 by 3 grid with each square having its own set of unique coordinates. Therefore, we are able to locate our current position and the target position. Using arithmetic operations, we calculate the horizontal and vertical distance we need to travel, using the x and y values respectively. From there, we can use a and 2 to calculate the angle we need to travel at. The angle will range from minus 180 to 180 degrees, which with negative values indicating anti-clockwise direction and positive values indicating clockwise direction. We can then calculate the, how drastic the robot's limits. 
Our square targeting strategy is to target squares that have a high probability of a certain color object or a deposit. We wanted to earn a bonus of 180 points for each deposit of our RCCP. Therefore, when we target a square, we make the robot pick up two of the same colored objects before it leaves the square to use the color. This will occur only when we have less than two of the colors. Once loaded object is full, we target the deposit to quickly drop off the object. Now we will talk about how our robot avoids obstacles and the walls. We use trigonometry to correct the left and right ultrasonic sensors, since these are tilted at 45 degrees. Correcting them will allow us to obtain the distances shown by the grey arrows, where the left and right ultrasonic sensors are facing 0 degrees. From there, we calculated how urgently the robot needs to turn to avoid something. This is our ro wall rotation, which is combined with the error for square targeting. Whichever has a higher error, that rotation will be followed. We will now talk about trap avoidance. When either color sensor sends a warning, both wheels of the robot move in the negative direction, or backwards. One wheel moves back at a faster speed so that the robot will rotate as it steps up, so that when it moves forward again, it will most likely not run into the warning. If loaded object is zero, however, we do not perform trap avoidance as it, is, as it is not necessary, and letting it run over the trap also prevents moving. Now that we've explained the strategies, here is how we implemented them for our preliminary run. Here is an implementation of our mobile function adapted from the preliminary event. Different, different cases are considered depending on the number of loaded objects. When loaded objects equal to zero, we can run at a maximum speed of 100. But when loaded objects is not equal to zero, there are two cases. In squares 00, 01, 10, 20, 21, and 22, there are traps near them. Therefore, we move at a slower speed of 80 for the robot to avoid traps. In the rest of the square, the robot can run at a maximum speed of 100 since there are no traps to avoid. Next, we have the implementation of our color sorting function. As you can see from this flowchart, we broke up the different cases according to their R values first. For example, if the R value is more than or equals to 244, we are sure that the robot is sensing a red object. We use thresholds so that there is a wide range of values that we can allocate to each case, increasing the chance of determining cases correctly. If more than one case falls within a certain value of R of R values, we use either the G or B values to further separate the cases. In total, for this map, there are 10 different colors, therefore 10 different cases. Lastly, the implementation of our square targeting rotation. When the loaded object is 6, the robot will go to the nearest deposit zone based on the robot's current position. So for example, if our current position is 1, 1, we go to 0, 2. As for when loaded object is less than 6, we will move into a specific square that has the color that we need and search in that square until we have two of that color before moving on to another square to look for the next color. These cases occur when there is more than 15 seconds remaining. When we have less than 15 seconds remaining, we get the robot to move up to square 0, 2, or 2, 2 depending on our current position. If loaded object is more than or equal to 3, it doesn't. Otherwise, it collects within that square. Now we will be moving on to our debugging segment. Thankfully, the bot performed as we planned, it, planned for it to, so we did, we did run into issues along the way. This includes our square targeting not working well at the beginning, possibly due to the wall-like obstacles being in the way. To resolve this issue, we edited the route to ensure that they are not hindering our square targeting. As you can see, we started off with the route in figure 1, but changed it to the route of figure 2 to avoid the obstacles. We also made sure to test our code on Repolit and print F to the postpaid terminal to ensure the values were correct. We will next share our conclusion from the preliminary match. Overall, we are quite satisfied with the result from our preliminary round as we managed to achieve a score of 2,275, but there are, there are areas of improvement. And if we were to attempt this challenge again, we would try utilizing the square as a, as a top so that we will not run out of objects in our current route. This is because we realized once we made it to our source of deposit, objects in our coded route started to proceed, but objects in the top row are still plenty. No other methods were tried out besides the one stated, but the method was fine-tuned to improve its focus. Lastly, we will share about our learning experience. In the post space robot, we learned that there are many possibilities to go about the mission, and we need to consider its effectiveness to ensure that we have the best possible strategy. From this competition, we have also learned to select the best strategies to have strategic routing and to constantly test our code to make the debugging system. If you were to say anything to the other participants, uh, it is to explore many different ways of solving this task and from that improve their coding abilities. That is
is all we have for you today. Thank you for your kind attention. We hope that you have learned more from our sharing.